Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. My apologies if I sound more than a little hoarse today. Believe me, I sound a lot better than I did earlier on this week. Anyway, welcome today to my first encounter with one of Seiko's excellent value sub brands. That sub brand being Alba. So, manufactured by Seiko, featuring a Seiko movement, but featuring a price tag no longer associated with Seiko, who, as we all know, have been jacking their prices up steadily for the last five years at least. So does that mean that today in 2022, if you want a great value Seiko watch, you shouldn't actually buy a Seiko watch, you should buy an Alba watch instead? That is what we're gonna find out. And I've gotta say thank you to one particular subscriber for this one. A number of you have emailed me over the years suggesting that I check out Alba, but a chap called Sam emailed me a few weeks ago Literally from the shop, he was buying two of these in a local jeweler, they were on sale. I clicked online, picked one up for myself for 100 Aussie dollars. That's the equivalent of 65 US dollars at the current exchange rate. Now 65 US dollars, you don't get much Seiko for 65 bucks these days, do you? How much Seiko do you get though if you buy an Alba for 65 dollars? Let's flip the camera and find out. So before I get into the box, let's have a look at the Alba website. But before we have a look at the Alba website, let's have a look at the Aldi website. Stick with me here, folks. There is some method to the madness. Aldi is a budget supermarket chain well known for selling food and drinks on the cheap and life's essentials such as pizza ovens and I've no idea what that thing actually is. They also sell products that from six feet away look a lot like big brand products. But when you get close up, you're like, hang on, that's not Sultana Bran, it's Bran and Sultanas. Hang on, those aren't cheese twisties, those are cheesy twists. You get the idea. Alba is like the Aldi version of Seiko. When you have a look at the website, all the designs have a familiar feel to them. From six feet away, you would swear that you had seen most of them before. For example, is that a Seiko Marine Master 200? No, it's an Alba AL4291X1. Is that a Seiko SRPG? No, it's an Alba AL4211X1. And indeed, the watch that I bought looks a lot like a Seiko tuner, doesn't it? I mean, that shroud is a bit of a giveaway. And of course, this is perfectly acceptable because it's Seiko homaging Seiko rather than somebody else homaging Seiko. For today's thumbnail, though, I chose instead not a tuner, but a comparison with a Seiko 5KX. I think that is probably more fair on the Alba. So there you go, I paid $100 on the nose for the Alba, which is the equivalent of 65 USD. The cheapest price I could find on a green and gold 5KX is 350 Aussie dollars, so three and a half times the cost of the Alba. If we're looking globally, 215 US dollars, again, three and a half times the price I paid for the Alba. So is the Seiko 5 three and a half times better then, or is this Alba a bit of a bargain? Yeah, well, it's okay, I suppose. I think I've been spoiled now. I think I've just bought and made videos about so many ridiculous bargains that this watch is kind of just only okay. Maybe if I had come across it five years ago, I would have thought differently. But today, it just isn't blowing my doors off. It's not awful by any means. And under certain circumstances, I'm sure it will do a job for certain people. But I've just seen so many other watches that will do a better job. I'm struggling to recommend this one. It's certainly wearable enough in terms of its dimensions. It's a 43 mil in diameter, bang on 13 mil thick, 49 lug to lug, a little bit longer than you would find on a Seiko Tuna, for example, but the lugs do point downwards, as you can see here. 20 millimeter lug width, bit of a taper down to 18, back up to 19 at the clasp, sized up for me, seven inch wrist, 143 grams. Stainless steel case, crown. Now it's a good size 7 mil crown, unsigned, but I'm not complaining too much at the price and it's nice and grippy. However, look at this case. All brushed, which I appreciate, apart from the bezel, which is polished there, as you can see also, but the shroud is actually the case. It is the case. Look, the lug goes into the shroud, goes into the shroud, goes into the lug, goes into the screw on case back. So yeah, you can't detach it. That is how the watch is. So it's meant to look like a tuna with a shroud, but yeah, 
it's just an odd looking case. The bezel is bi-directional and friction, so at least you'll never have a problem with misalignment. That is an aluminium insert, but there is no loom pip there. 100 meters of water resistance, bi-directional bezel, no loom pip. It is not a dive watch, but again, for the price, I'm not gonna complain too much about that either. Case back is stainless steel, screw on and high polished, and it has a logo that frankly looks like an Aldi version of the Seiko Great Wave, doesn't it? Printed spec sheet there with the water resistance and stainless steel, etc. And I did say Seiko ownership equals Seiko movement. When this one first arrived, I got it out of the box and it was running, but I gave it a wind and I was like, wow, that is one of the smoothest hand winds I've felt. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, non-hacking. That is a 7S26 or 7S36, I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. When did you last hear about one of those? Those movements debuted in 1996, so yeah, it's now a 25 plus year old movement. Not exactly bleeding edge then, but it should be reliable and it does have a day-day complication on the dial. And I don't mind the dial and handset at all. Again, the hands look familiar, but slightly different to Seiko's. Lollipop counterbalance on the second hand is a nice touch. Triangle at 12, rectangles at the six and nine circular indices everywhere else, and a nicely framed day date complication. Green sunburst is a nice strong sunburst effect, perhaps one too many lines of text above the index at six there, Alba logo is very, very simple above the pinion, but overall, it's not too bad and it's decently legible as well. But the bracelet, I'm afraid, is just junk. I mean, it looks okay, three-link oyster style, kind of rough brushing, but those are pressed and rolled links. You know what that means, don't you? You're gonna lose a lot of arm hair with this one. Hollow end links as well, yeah, not the finest. Combined with a clasp that is too small, only three holes of micro adjust here. Really, they could have been pushing this one out. If they're gonna put them that close together, we could have done with five holes of micro adjust, I think. And of course, it is cheap. Pressed upper, pressed lower. It rattles, it squeaks, it's generally junk. It wears okay though. I mean, I do like the tuners these days. It was one of the last Seiko Prospect series that I got my hands on, but I've got one in my collection. The tuner has a shorter lug to lug than this though. And really you wonder why they didn't trim a mill off either side. It would have worn much better had they done just that. Yeah, the bracelet is a nasty rattler and it took some of my arm hairs off on the way on my wrist. If it does it to me, it'll do it to you. Overhead legibility is okay though. It's a decent sized watch, decent sized dial and that Seiko-esque hand and index arrangement lends itself to legibility. Flat mineral crystal, no AR coating. It does struggle occasionally under my studio lights, but overall, it's not awful. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the Loom, which is pretty awful. It looks okay initially. You're thinking, hey, Lumi Bright, Seiko product. This is gonna be good. Lumi Bright's usually pretty good, but when I turn the speed up on it, it's struggling after five minutes. It's gone after 10 minutes. To put that Loom in context, here's a comparison with an SKX on the left, I don't have a Seiko 5 in my collection currently, so the SKX is pinch hitting for that. And on the right, it's a steel dive tuner. You'll see that one featuring again later on. Initially, yeah, the Alba does okay, but as soon as I turn the speed up on these, it's all over Red Rover. 10 minutes in, the SKX is still doing okay. Steel dive doing better than okay. Alba, nowhere to be seen. So it may be economically viable, but I just don't see too many arguments for picking one of these up. If you're okay with a tuna homage, which you clearly are, because if you bought one of these, then you are okay with a tuna homage, then buy a proper tuna homage in the form of this steel dive. I paid a frankly ridiculous $59 delivered for one of these in the sale in March this year. I thought they'd made a mistake and they were gonna cancel my order, but no, they shipped it and it's just better than the Alba in every single way. Hacking and hand-winding NH35, sapphire crystal ceramic bezel insert, that is a removable shroud, and that is a usable, chunky five-link engineer bracelet, and you saw how good the loom was. Or if you're not into the whole AliExpress homage thing, buy a Vostok Amphibia. 
it looks like nothing other than a Vostok Amphibia. It's hard as nails, it's got double the water resistance of the Alba, better loom, and the movement will run for a decade between services at minimum. Or I don't say it very often, save up and buy the real thing. Spend the extra money, buy the Seiko 5, you get a better movement, you get better loom, you get better case finishing, and you get a bracelet that is actually usable, making the Alba look like a false economy. It may not shock any of you to discover that I in fact shop at Aldi, but this is one occasion where I think I would go for the big brand instead. So there you have it. Like I said, I would have been far more impressed if I had picked one of these up five years ago than I am today. But if you get it on sale and you're gonna put it straight on a NATO strap or a rubber strap or something, then for that price, you can't really argue with a solid Seiko made beater. If on the other hand, you are okay with AliExpress and or Vostok, you should definitely check out one of each. The Steel Dive is better than the Alba in every single way for only a few dollars more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in a future video.